China has just released the mother of all tanks. Hello guys, it's Matmus here with you today, thank you for joining me. So, I recently stumbled across some information on a brand new main battle tank that's being released. No, it is not the one we're looking at, but it is of Chinese origin. This is the Chinese main battle tank that has recently been designed, but as of literally just now, uh, I found information and some footage of a new tank that they have just developed. This is breaking news guys and also some really interesting news. Um, I was gobsmacked after seeing this design just how incredible it actually is and uh, I guess the Chinese really have pulled out all the stops on this design. It is, is hands down I think a, a true contender to western main battle tanks. The one we're looking at was clearly just a po prototype and they're still working on uh, selecting their new main battle tank they want to feature for their armed forces and their armoured group. But the one we're about to look at I think is definitely a key contributing um, contender for this uh, it's extremely impressive so as always we're going to go over the vehicle itself um, we'll go over its features its specifications um, and then we'll just kind of go over my opinion on it so uh, we'll say farewell to this vehicle and hopefully uh, China will have this I guess on the back burner to allow and make room for one of the most impressive main battle tanks I have ever seen so let's get straight into it then Introducing the T-420 main battle tank, otherwise known as the Rising Sun. Guys, this is the new Chinese main battle tank that they are developing as of right now. As we can see, it is being put through its paces on the trials and development stage right now, uh, working tirelessly to get this tank ready for their armoured force. As you can see, the vehicle is based around the T-72 chassis, however, it has some severe improvements. As you can see by these diligent technicians here, they're working tirelessly to make sure that this tank can be placed onto basically the same uh, spectrum, I guess, as most uh, Western and NATO main battle tanks. And clearly this vehicle has not only the maneuverability, firepower and protection to do so. Uh, the vehicle really does have some really cool features. As you can see though, its mobility is just unmatched. Um, the speed of which this vehicle can go is actually classified, but I have been told by a recent informant that it can reach up to around 90 kilometers an hour, which is extremely impressive. Its off-road capabilities are very, very good. Uh, considering this vehicle is only in its trial phase, um, it seems to be doing very, very well. I have been told that its off-road capabilities are unrivaled. Um, it pretty much can go just about anywhere. It is uh, completely submersible too, guys, so this thing can literally cross rivers uh, underwater with no snorkel. Uh, it has its own um, breathing apparatus inside, so they just seal it up and off it goes. The vehicle has been given high technology thermal painting, so basically the vehicle has been completely painted with um, a special kind of protective coating that cannot be detected um, from both the air and thermal imaging, any kind of imaging systems. The paint that they've placed onto this vehicle uh, allows it to be pretty much unseen. Also the dynamic shape of the vehicle is actually allowing for any kind of um, laser rangefinder that is placed onto it to bounce straight off, which is incredible, which therefore defeats the purpose of being able to use any kind of main armament against this vehicle. The developers of this vehicle are some of the finest scientists and military analysts out there. Um, as you can see, these guys are putting it through its paces again, making sure that it is able to take a good hit from the front uh, and also being able to maneuver itself uh, without an engine. You can actually just push this thing around, which is really, really effective. A couple of other things that really do set this vehicle apart from other NATO forces tanks, guys, is the addition of three extra smoke dischargers. Yes, we're talking about some serious smoke coverage that could be placed down, which is really, really impressive. There's also been an additional bin on the back of the vehicle to place more rations and supplies in. Um, these, Some of these technological analysts have actually uh, insinuated that the bins can actually be filled with uh, extra propaganda just in case you do wish to keep the troops and morale back behind the vehicle uh, upbeat and uh, in the place where they need to be in the battle. One of the key and defining features of this main battle tank which really puts it apart from any NATO counterpart is its electromagnetic defensive measures. Now this thing is really impressive and highly technologically advanced compared to most modern main battle tanks. 
This large block you see on top of the vehicle guys is basically a highly charged electromagnet that send out positive electromagnetic waves to prevent any metallic armament or objects heading towards the vehicle. What this basically means guys is if any main armament, say from a 120mm cannon to an anti-tank guided missile are fired at this tank, this magnet actually portrays a large magnetic dome around the tank that prevents any kind of munition hitting it. Almost like the Red Alert Iron Curtain, I don't know if you ever remember playing that game, but the Iron Curtain was basically a, a force field you could place around the tank and that's exactly what this block does. Obviously it's a highly hidden trade secret as to how this system actually works. Uh, it seems like the vehicle does have a nuclear reactor in the back of it to provide its power plant uh, to allow it to energize enough power for this particular electromagnetic system. But seriously though, that is an impressive piece of defensive technology. As you can see by the size of the turret being quite small, there is only a crew of one being able to man all stations of the vehicle where the Chinese are very good at multitasking. As you can see by the tassels here, it's also got its own minesweeper device. Very, very useful for actually uh, stopping IEDs and anti-tank mines, which is clearly a massive attribute when taking on huge swaths of armor um, that we could potentially use from NATO. The armament of this vehicle is a very powerful plastic tube. Uh, capable of firing extremely uh, powerful uh, plastic and cardboard projectiles uh, over a range of around 5 kilometers. Uh, multiple smoke discharges, guys, we're talking about a lot of smoke discharges um, and a lot of tin foil um, placed on the vehicle to be able to deter from any anti-tank guided missiles that could potentially be put on target, which is, uh, you know, something very, very new. I mean, tin foil is something that uh, NATO forces really haven't quite got round to yet, and it seems like China's really taken it on board. Um, no coaxial machine gun, they haven't really thought the, the need for that. Uh, the road wheels are extremely durable, um, capable of being able to run over IEDs and actually um, continue rolling very, very good. And the tracks are bare minimal in terms of thickness and size. The gunner's sight is very, very um, high tech. It's basically a hole cut into the side of the, the uh, turret there, and the gunner can actually peek through. The vehicle also has its own anti-tank guided missile, capable of engaging air and ground targets. However, this uh, tube launcher is also very good at launching Chinese fireworks. Yes, this vehicle is very, very prominent on the parade square, being able to do its own ceremonial duties when showcasing for the Chinese government. Of course, the fireworks are not just there for ceremonial purposes. They could also distract the uh, opposing force and NATO forces. We tend to find that fireworks are highly interesting and amusing. Um, and as soon as they start launching, people could just kind of stare up into the sky, uh, not focusing on the battlefield, but much more the pretty fireworks going up in the sky in the distance there. Um, extremely clever technology, a very good weapon system. It's basically a distraction um, weapon system. It's able to, you know, give the, the upper hand to the Chinese armored force because we're too busy looking at the fireworks, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're goddamn stunning, some of those Chinese fireworks shows, I mean, it's unreal. Um, so a very, very uh, important part of the, the weapon system here is not just engaging tanks with the fireworks, but actually able to just uh, distract the shit out of NATO. So there you have it, guys, the impressive and highly anticipated Chinese T420 Rising Sun. Guys, it's clearly going to be a very big contender in the main battle tank market. It seems as though NATO will be on the edge of their seats with this kind of technology being placed onto the battlefield. I must admit myself, with this uh, information being come through, I'm highly taken off guard. Uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, military analysts out there looking at this kind of footage are going to be shocked to see the technological advances that China are actually bringing to the table. Of course, this vehicle has also been benchmarked potentially to be a drone tank, so they may send uh, literally hundreds and thousands of these things uh, into a battlefield scenario and produce a basic uh, non-casualty armored battle force, which allows the Chinese military to produce, uh, I guess, cybernetic forces. Uh, they have guys that just sit behind computers uh, most of the day. Um, that's very unusual for China. We don't really tend to have many people sat behind computers there, but it'll be an adjustment for uh, their armed forces and their, and their populace to actually uh, get behind a computer and, and operate things electronically. Uh, because, you know, we know China are renowned for um, their skills in cr producing electronics, but actually operating them um, is another matter. Well, it'll be very interesting to see if they did produce this tank in drone form, how well it would actually work. Clearly, with that one-man crew, it seems like it's going to uh, perform flawlessly uh, on the battlefield 
battlefield, being able to uh, take on multiple targets, uh, deter from any kind of munitions being set upon it, and engage with that impressive main gun there that's supported by the steel beam uh, and the plastic tube along with the duct tape, really is going to provide some serious uh, penetration potential against NATO tanks, or any kind of tanks really, we're not just talking about NATO, any threat to the Chinese uh, firepower. Uh, military force. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, some breaking news, clearly. I mean, I'm sure most of you are taken off guard by this and, and very shocked to see this kind of military arsenal being brought into the technological field of tanking. I myself think this thing is going to do fantastically. Um, some of the features that it has, including the tassels, the magnetic uh, repellent, the tinfoil, it's really going to produce some, some impressive statistics in terms of military firepower. I would love to see um, this thing in further development. I'm sure it will be put in more trials. We're going to see a lot more footage of this in the future. Um, and I'm sure even the Air Force are a little nervous about this thing. I mean, it does have the potential to launch those fireworks up there, uh, scare the crap out of any kind of Apache pilots, come and hunt them down or whatever else may be on the battlefield at the time. So guys, if you did enjoy today's video and you're very impressed by this Chinese vehicle, I'd love it you could leave me a comment uh, and a like. Uh, also guys, feel free to come have a chat with me at any time on my Discord and uh, come check out my Patreon account too. Any support would be much appreciated as always. And I, I really appreciate you guys stopping by and watching today's video. All the best, have a great day and well done to China. Bye bye.